Greetings and welcome. Pastor Al, Gam Williams, Sabbath Ministries, and Lashunda Smith welcome you to praise and worship today. Invite family and friends to join you for our prayer series for the next four weeks. Like, share, and comment. Be blessed and stay safe during this holiday weekend. Hi. I need your help. Can you do me a small favor? Share or like or comment. And then please subscribe to our channel.
please join us in a word of prayer by touching your screen. Eternal Father, we invoke your spirit within this worship experience. We praise and laud your miraculous name. We thank you, Lord, for opportunities to have a direct communication line with you, known as prayer. Forgive us of our sins. Heal us of our sickness. Now, use me, Lord, until you use me up. And the church said, Amen. Our text, 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, the second verse. At your leisure, please read verses 1 through 7. N I V. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. God's word for the people of God. And the people of God said, thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday of our prayer series. For a subject, I want you to think on, I choose life. I've only just one minute, 60 seconds. It forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it. The Reverend Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, educator, pin those words. Mike Wilson learned he was dying of an incurable disease. He couldn't even pronounce the name. Consequently, he threw in the towel and started acting as if his life was over. He quit his job, ruled out marriage, drank heavily, and turned into a hermit. He was waiting to die, but he might as well have been dead. Mike's life was empty. However, the fact he wasn't even dying. Nearly five years after the initial diagnosis, another checkup revealed that Mike didn't have the terminal disease. Given a second chance, he married, stopped drinking, and bought a home. Today, he feels great. Nothing has changed except Mike's attitude. When he thought he was dying, he set a course for self destruction. First and second kings complete the story of the kingdom of Israel. These books pick up where second Samuel ends. Second Samuel did not address the question of who would serve as king after David. The books of first and second kings answer that question and tell the reminder and remainder of the story of the northern and southern kingdom. You see, the kingdom was divided. Our text deals with Hezekiah, a sick king, a good king, a faithful king, a righteous king. The Assyrian invasion occurred 
in the 14th year of his reign. Now God's chief prophet, Isaiah, tells him he's about to die. Hezekiah immediately took on the posture of prayer and illustrated the attitude, I want to live. Allow me three observations of our text. Take it to God in prayer. No distractions. Healed. I want to live. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Verse 2. King Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord. The Bible says Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. God sent his prophet Isaiah to tell him to get his house in order because he was going to die. And to add insult to injury, he added, you will not recover from it. Ah, the sickness occurred the very year of that invasion that would put him at the age of 30 nine years of age. Set thine house in order. It wasn't about his domestic affairs, but those of his kingdom. Since he did not have a child early in his life, his successor would have to be selected. Notice who he first called on. He took it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth to the sixth verses read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Oh, is there a witness in the house? Today, hallelujah, you know a little bit about being sick. You know a little bit about being troubled or being dismayed. But you took it to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> I want to live. No distractions. Verse 2. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. When I visited Israel some years ago, it was the custom to turn your back away and pray. At a scene in the Wailing Wall where Israelites turned their faces to the wall, they bow their heads and weep as they are praying. Oh, he isolated himself and removed all the distractions. It must be painful to give up your life in your very prime. Ask Jesus, but the one distress that was greatest to him was the enemies of the gates of the kingdom. His plans were to have a religious reformation that may never come. Thus he cried. Mark the first chapter, the 35th verse reads, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Oh, my grandfather called it his secret closet or his prayer closet. But you can just go on and say the restroom. No distractions. I want to live. Heal, verses 5 through 6. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father, 
David says, I have heard your prayers and seen your tears, and I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go to the temple of the Lord. Verse 6, and I will add 15 years to your life, and you will deliver the city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. One may ask, why did God choose to add 15 more years? Hezekiah was now in the 15th year of his reign and God added an equal amount that he had already enjoyed. 15 and 15. He gave him 30 years. First Peter, the second chapter, the 24th verse, and it reads, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And by his wounds, we have been healed. Oh, allow me to borrow the refrain to this old Negro spiritual. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gideon to heal the sin sick soul. Healing, healing. I want to live. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. In closing, General Norman Schwarzkopf revealed during the Persian Gulf War that the 100-hour battle was decided in the very first minute when Allied planes savaged Iraqi air defense. And when I saw our planes knock out the radar and the communication system, I knew that very moment we had them. Oh, there is a parallel for believers. Although we are in a very real war with the enticements to sin and adversity, will one who harasses us, the outcome of the conflict has already been decided. You see, that occurred on Calvary when Jesus disarmed the rulers and authorities, where Jesus triumphed over through prayer. Colossians, the second, hallelujah, chapter, the 15th verse, NASB version. Jesus defeated Satan on making reconciliation between God and man possible. Understand, prayer is our divine communication with God. If the enemy can destroy that bond from humanity to God, then they will be like that battle in the Persian Gulf. But because of Calvary and Jesus conquering death, we have a choice. I choose Jesus. I choose life because Jesus is life. Oh, if you choose Jesus, your have is love. If you choose Jesus, your have is joy. If you choose Jesus, your have is peace. If you choose Jesus, you have his repentance. If you choose Jesus, you have his forgiveness. If you choose Jesus, you have his grace and his mercy. I want to live. Oh, that's my final answer. I know what prayer can do. I choose life. And he added another 15 years on to his life. I want to live. Amen. 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 Well, I pray that something that has been said, sung, or preached 
blessed you today. Prayer series through the month of September. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then pray this prayer with me today. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess and repent of all my sins. And today, I make you my Lord and Savior. And the church said, Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we call that conversion. Congratulations. If by chance you say, Reverend, I've been visiting so many churches. I've been looking for that perfect church. Stop looking. If you find a Bible reaching church, if you find a Bible teaching church, if you find a Bible preaching church, that's the church you've been looking for, where Jesus is the center of its joy. You say, Reverend, I grew up in the church, was born and baptized in the church, but I thought I outgrew the church, so I left. You see, you may have given up on the church, but the Lord never gave up on you. Come back home. We call that rededication. Details are in the chat. You say, Reverend, I watch you on YouTube, Facebook Live, and other parts of social media. How can I be a member of your ministry? Oh, we would love to have you. And we call that virtual membership. Details are in the chat. But whatever you do, establish your relationship with Jesus Christ today. We want to thank you for your love and your generosity by sowing seeds of faith into the ministry. If by chance you have a desire to continue or you want to start for the very first time, there is an app on your cell phone called Cash App or Zale where you can transfer funds into the account. But whatever you do, just give God the glory and pass it on. We want to thank you for a moment of your time. The Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Same time, same station. But remember these words. want to live. Have that little talk with Jesus and allow him to make it right. Prayer series, I want to live. God bless you.